Praise the Lord. Once again, I welcome everyone to the voice of destiny, inspiring your moment and giving direction to your life. I'm Chris Imano. Today, by the special grace of the Lord, I'll be taking us on a very important subject that is captioned in pursuit of spiritual growth. Permit me to go through some scripture before we commence teaching. I'll read from Galatians chapter 4, from verse 1 to 4. Now I say that the heir, as long as is a child, differeth nothing from his servant. Though he be Lord of all, that is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father, even so we who were children were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. That's Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. I also read 2 Peter chapter 3, 17 and 18. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to him the glory both now and forever. I'd like everyone hearing me today to understand that spiritual growth is a must. It is not enough to be saved, but you must grow spiritually. You have inheritances in Christ, but all of your inheritances are delivered at the instance of your spiritual growth. There are many things you cannot gain access to in the Lord, except you are growing spiritually. Unfortunately, many have been saved for so long a time, but so many are not growing spiritually. I'd like you to know just as physical growth is important, so is spiritual growth very important in the life of a believer. Just like a 10 years old child looking like a 2 years old will give concern to the parents. That's how every child who is not growing in the Lord is a concern to the Lord. The scripture we read said, as long as he's a child, even as long as he's a heir, but also a child, he differeth nothing but a servant. That means there are certain things you are going through or suffering right now in the hand of the wicked. It wasn't because the devil has right over you. It's because your growth has not been established. It is spiritual growth that determines the state of every man's spiritual life. Very important to know that growth is a necessity in the faith. We have so many who are growing old, but are not growing up. Many are counting years in the church without any tangible proof of their work with the Lord. It is made known to us in the book of Hebrews that there are many benefits that accompany salvation. But most of these benefits are only attainable or obtainable by spiritual growth. There are many things you will never see in the Lord if you fail to grow. Even Jesus was made to grow. We saw that in Luke chapter 2 and verse 40, the Bible says the child grew and waxed great in wisdom. And he had favor with God and man. And in Luke 2, 52, he said the child also grew in stature. And also increase in wisdom and add favor with God and man. That means if he didn't grow, there are many things he wouldn't be able to do. The little boy Jesus wasn't sent on to the cross to die. He grew to a point where he could withstand certain things. He never got baptized as a child. He got baptized after he was fully mature. And we saw that by his maturity, he understood the time of his assignment and he understood the term of his assignment. Many are in sin city because of lack of spiritual growth. They attempt many things God told them to do before time. And the enemy team tend to kill whatever they have started doing. So they have come to let you understand that spiritual growth is a pursuit that every believer must engage himself to do. This day I will be taking us through to help us understand the essentials for spiritual growth. Why is spiritual growth important? It is what determines our inheritance in Christ. Without spiritual growth, many of the things that are rightly yours cannot be given to you. Just like a little child cannot inherit his father's possession, they will write a will and keep it and say, until he become of certain age, he cannot have access to it. That's how many believers have a lot of inheritances laid up for them that are only accessible as they grow in the Lord. They need to grow in faith. They need to grow in grace. They need to grow in revelation. They need to grow in patience. All spiritual virtues that are in Christ, are the, they are the roadway into all of our inheritances. So until you are growing in spirit, growing in grace, 
growing in knowledge, you may be limited about what God can do with you. Many of us have heard that God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. There are no impossibilities in God, yet there are so many impossibilities in our life. Why? We are not growing. It's not enough to read the Bible. There are certain levels of growth you must attain to be able to command certain levels of the anointing. I remember a very wonderful testimony by late Archbishop Benson in Dausa. He said at a time in his life, he heard his pastor give a testimony of how Jesus raised the dead. So he was curious with the knowledge that he had. He went down the street of Benin looking for dead bodies everywhere. And he was going from place to place. Anybody dead there? He was crazy with the knowledge. Can I let you understand right now? Spiritual growth is what aids us to build spiritual stamina. And our spiritual stamina is what determines what we can stand per time. Many of us have been on one point of temptation over a period of time. We see from time to time our temptation is seen. And we keep falling at the same spot. What is that pointing out to you? You are not growing. Year in, year out, the same temptation and you are still falling. Every weakness is an indication of lack of growth. Every weakness is an indication of lack of growth. So every time your weakness seems to be seen, same errors going up in your life, same fall every day, is an indication, friends, that you are not growing. And once you are not growing, it gives God great concern because it limits what he can do with you and it limits what you can do for the kingdom. So this is why spiritual growth is of great essence. And that's why I'm calling out to you, my friend, today. There's a need for you to grow in the Lord. Because God is not the one keeping things from you. You are the one shutting yourself out. You have not built enough spiritual capacity to be able to run kingdom business. Just like a man who is wealthy cannot hand over his empire to his 11 years old child. Because he lacked the adequacy and the efficiency to run that business. That's how you are ordained to run businesses for the Father. Assignments on the earth. Massive things that God wants to do through you. But right now you lack capacity. Why? You have not grown yourself or grow yourself to the level that God can entrust you with certain things. Please understand that everything in the kingdom is about entrustment. If God cannot trust you, then God cannot commit things into your hand. I like the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 16, rather 15. We were told that this guy left home. He stayed with his father for a while. And after a short period of time, he told his father, I want the things that pertain to me. And I want to go and start my life. Is it that asking his father's inheritance was wrong? No, it was his right. But one thing I noticed from that story, that guy has not built capacity to stay out of his father. The minute he went out of his father, Everything that the father would not permit him to do, he started doing it. And we saw that he lavished all his substance and he became poor again. Many are where they are today, not because God doesn't want to elevate them. They have not built, required spiritual capacity to be able to manage wealth. Many are suffering in marriages today. They have not built spiritual capacity that will help them become better husband, better wife, or better men anywhere. Can I let you understand right now? The day you grow spiritually impatient, you will find out that you will be able to dwell among men without any form of crisis. Some of us right now need to grow in love. Some of us need to grow impatient. Some of us need the growth of self-control. All these are areas of our life where spiritual growth is responsible, is highly needed. Can I ask you, my friends, check your life since the year began. How much have you grown in the Lord? Check out the temptations you came through. How many did you fall? And check out the ones you had in the past. Every time a child fails an exam, he rewrites the exam, he fails it again. It means the child is not learning. One indication that you are not growing is the fact that you can't apply the things you have had over a period of time. I've noticed many are just coming to church. Many are not growing. Many have been members of a church for a long period of time, but they are not growing spiritually. They hear a lot of words, but they are not able to apply same words in their life. A proof of spiritual growth is ability to apply spiritual truths without supervision. The proof of spiritual growth is ability to apply spiritual truths without supervision. Beloved, what is growing up spiritually? Growing up spiritually simply means growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Being evident by godly character and having a kingdom approach in all matters of life. It is 
growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, being evident with godly character and kingdom approach to all matters of life. We saw this evidence in the life of Joseph in Genesis 39 without his father's supervision when he was first tempted by Potiphar's wife. We heard what he said. He said, how can I do this great evil? My master has committed everything into my hand, but except you. He said, but I fear God. That's a mark of spiritual growth. Able to show godly character without supervision. Able to represent the kingdom properly without anybody supervising it. What is spiritual growth number two today? It is ability to learn more about God and lean more on God. Ability to learn more about God and lean more on God. We saw this evident in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These guys have learned so much of God and the day of testing came for them. And they proved that truly, truly, they knew their God. When they were asked to bow down before the fairy furnace, their faith didn't just manifest at that time, my friend. They have had it built up before time. Your faith will not rise in the day of adversity if the faith is not built. Understand that it is spiritual growth that built faith to wait the day of adversity. Most of us are trying to use our faith when adversity comes or challenges of life hit at us. They will find out that we are empty. What if you never filled your foil tank before time? You can't have your car on motion. Many have not learned anything about God. They are ever hearing, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So spiritual growth talks about learning more about God, leaning more on God. And it begins from where you are. The place you are today is the best place to start growing spiritually. Number three, spiritual growth simply means of living your old life and walking in the newness of life that Christ Jesus had made, thereby making you an ambassador for Christ. That is, you know where you came from. Certain things you used to do before is an indication that you stopped this and you are able to do this now. It's a sign that you are growing. Some of us have been malicious and today we are still malicious. We are getting much more malicious in our dealing. Some of us have the trait of unforgiveness when we before we came to Christ. We've been in Christ for a long time now and some of us even boast of this old lifestyle. This is my nature. No, now in Christ, you are taking up the new nature of Christ, replacing the old one with the new one. In Galatians chapter 5, from verse 19, told us about the works of the flesh. And he had listed each and every one of them. And he gave us another replacement. While we take out the work of the flesh, we begin to replace the work of the flesh with the fruit of the Spirit. Check it out right now. For there's no vacuum in nature. As you begin to uh, as you begin to strike out your old nature, you begin to replace it with new nature. It's my prayer that the Holy Spirit will empower somebody for a new direction and a new drive for growth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say at this point in time, spiritual growth is measured by your alignment to God and the degree to which you are yielding yourself to the Spirit of God to bear fruit in you. Spiritual growth is measured by your alignment to God and the degree to which you are yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit to bear fruit in you. So spiritual growth requires full alignment to God. When I talk about that, I'm talking about total submission to God. Bringing yourself down on the altar and allowing God to prune you. John 15 gives us a clear-cut explanation about what alignment is. He said, I'm the vine, my father is the husband man, he are the branches. And he said, every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, my father will cut off. But the one that bears fruit, my father will prune. The process of pruning is what is called sanctification. That's the work of the spirit in your life. Helping to refine your inner man such that nothing of your own nature is permitted to continue to walk inside of you. But the newness of life that flows from the Holy Spirit begin to permit through all of your system. They are making you an ambassador of God on the face of the earth. Beloved, spiritual growth requires a deliberate and intentional work by you. It doesn't jump on people. People do not assume growth. Growth is worked on. Just like every mother consciously take her time to feed her baby. And when the child is of age at a certain time, they force the child to eat adult food. That's how believers too must be conscious of what they do with their time. 
how they invest their life because many persons are not pursuing spiritual growth. Many are just in church in need of miracles. Can I say this at this point in time? When you give your life to Christ, there are certain things God gives you because you are a babe. But God expects you to grow. He won't give you things forever. That's why you can see some of us, our prayer seems not to be answered right now. Why? We ought to have grown better than where we are right now. I read something in a book by Benny Hinn. He says something, okay, Kenneth Hagin, sorry. Kenneth Hagin said something very dramatic. He said, at a point in time, his son was sick at one time. And he asked the Lord for healing. And the Lord healed the child. At another point in time, after some years, the child took healing again. And he prayed and the Lord didn't heal the child. And he went for a program and people were healed. He asked the Lord, why is my son not healed? God said, when your child was young, I healed him through your faith. The man is of age. I want him to use his faith. And he had another sister who was sick. And he prayed and the sister died. He said, one of the days he had a revelation where he was caught up into heaven. And he saw the sister in glory. And the sister was telling him why she was not healed. And he said, at that point in time, I've stayed in the church for a long time. And God expected me to have grown and be using my faith. But because I couldn't grow my faith, the enemies afflicted me and I died. Can I say this to you right now? Not pursuing spiritual growth, my friend, is to your greatest disadvantage. God doesn't lose anything when you are not growing. You lose everything. Some of us, we get to heaven and find out that everything ordained for us was ready. But we're not mature enough to enter into them. Spiritual growth is important. It's something to be pursued with all of your heart. As I continue today, I'd like us to understand what is the ultimate of spiritual growth. Why does God want me to grow? One, it is to make, is to make you conformable to the image of Jesus Christ. All of the growth we are pursuing is not to look like our pastor. Because that's one of the mistakes I've seen in the faith. Many are growing. They want to grow to talk like somebody. They want to grow to pray like somebody. Oh, wonderful. The evidence of spiritual growth is to make you conformable to the Son, Jesus Christ. That in everything, you look like Him. We have pastors giving us so that they can teach us to be like Jesus. They are not teaching us to be like themselves. Because I've seen many things going on. People are trying to grow to become like this. They want to grow to become like you can never and they know. The essence why God gave us teacher. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and wisdom. The purpose for feeding us with knowledge and wisdom so that we can grow into the stature of Christ. So the ultimate of spiritual growth is to get us to the point of looking like Jesus, talking like Jesus, behaving like Jesus. That's the ultimate of spiritual growth. And number two, why does God want me to grow spiritually? So that I can be fruitful unto every good works. There are great works God had prepared before the foundation of the earth that you should undertake for him. But beloved, you cannot undertake those works if you are not growing spiritually. What God will commit into your hands, my friend, will be very little. Friends, you've been given a great destiny. There are great things the Lord wants to rock with you on the face of the earth, at the business center, at the school where you are, at every workplace where you are found, not just in church, but until you grow up spiritually, there are certain spiritual assignments that can never be handed over to you. Nobody will make a 10 years old child a medical doctor. If he wants to be a doctor, he must grow because his mind cannot handle certain things. Many of us lack spiritual muscle and that's why God is not giving us more. No matter how much you admire an assignment, you grow into an assignment. You don't admire your way into an assignment. Many are admiring a lot of things, but this doesn't work. Can I at this point in time give a quick correction? Spiritual growth is not for competition. Spiritual growth is not for competition. Spiritual growth is not for self-aggrandizement. I can pray for 10 hours. I can pray for 12 hours. That's not, the, that's not the purpose why we are growing there. The essence of spiritual growth is to groom us and to help us grow into the stature of Jesus Christ. That when you talk, people will see Christ in you. When you appear, people will feel Christ around your life. Do not forget, 
I say the degree to which you have aligned yourself to God and submit yourself to the working of the Spirit in your life. Because one of the reasons why the Holy Ghost works in you is to prune you and groom you till all of you become like Christ. Jesus prayed in John 17, Father, I take them not out of this world. Keep them in this world. That his own prayer is that through you and I, people will see the Father in us. People will see the kingdom in us. I like something he was talking to Thomas. He said, Thomas, why do you talk about uh, show us the Father? He said, I haven't seen me. I have not seen the Father. That is the ultimate of spiritual growth. Friends, that when people meet you in school, they have seen Jesus. When people see you at workplace, they have seen Jesus. When you walk down the street, they have seen Jesus. Because everything about Christ is fully and bodily represented and giving expression through your life. Somebody may want to ask me today, how do I grow spiritually? It's possible to grow and it begins with where you are. Number one, you must be genuinely born again. It's not going to church. Genuinely born again. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I used to graphically make an illustration each time I go out for so many. A woman will carry a baby for nine months in her womb. I asked, why don't they, when the woman deliver the child, why don't they just add three months with and call the child a one-year-old child? Any life outside of Christ is a lost life. You only truly start to live when you become born again. Because only living things have capacity for growth. So being born again is the beginning of spiritual growth. It's a journey to a whole new world. I'd like you to understand today that salvation is God planting his seed in you. And that seed planted in you requires nurturing, and watering for effectual growth. You can't make much out of salvation if you stop at the point of just being saved. Now that you are saved, there are other things you need to begin to do. Most of us got saved and got stuck. And we got angry and said, they told me if I come to God, if I give my life to Christ, it, things will change. Friends, beyond giving your life to Christ, there are practical approach to work with God that will make your salvation a reality. Number two, Step in growing up spiritually. Feed on the word. The word of God is the spiritual diet that everyone must eat. Not everyone must read. We have too many who are reading the Bible. We have some persons who are studying the Bible. And we have a very few who are eating the Bible. Jeremiah 15 and 16. He said, I found thy word and I ate them. They were the rejoicing and joy of my heart. God's word is not just for reading. We read to get information. God's word is not just for studying. We study to gather facts. God's word is for eating. Looking at a food doesn't fill your stomach. Many of us have been looking on the word every day. We just read to get informed. God said, what the word is, as shown us in scripture, the word is likened to a milk. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, say, desire the sincere meek of the word of God. Jesus told us the word is bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this. So the word of God is bread. And he told us the word of God is meat in Hebrews chapter 5. And he graduated to say the word of God is strong meat. And in Isaiah 55, he told us that the word of God is wine. All these are different classes of the word of God. And they have different impacts. A child that, an adult that drinks just milk and the adult that eats bread and eats meat cannot have the same amount of strength. Many of us at the meek level of life, the light side of God's word, we don't want to be rebuked, we don't want to be corrected. When messages that talks about the things you must abdicate and get into for God, you get offended. Can I let you understand this right now? Until you feed your spirit man with the word of God, your spirit man will become malnourished and incapable of assessing certain spiritual realities. Just like every little child can become malnourished when they don't properly eat. That's how most of the persons in church spiritually are lame. Dead spirits that can't pick divine signal. They can't even understand the will of God. This is how much it is so bad, as minute 
as choosing a life partner in church. For a lady, a man who has been in church for years, five years, he cannot tell you, this is the will of God for my life. This is how much it shows in your life that you are not growing spiritually, that you are not able to discern the will of God for you per time. Feeding your spirit man on the word of God keeps your spirit man sensitive. Gives you capacity to discern the will of God per time. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual stewardship. And verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. Mark the word. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are the one that must feed your spirit and renew your mind. It's a responsibility on you. Please, can I say at this point in time, don't just be satisfied with the food you get served in the church. I like in the church to be like a restaurant where you are hungry and you hurriedly rush in to get some food. But you have a house where you go back and cook proper food and eat. The church is considered a spiritual restaurant where they serve us good meals. And we're expected, if we like the taste of the meal, to go and practice at home. Many are not feeding on the word. Many are word dry. Some go through the week without even opening up their Bible. And yet they are expecting God to speak to them. If you ignore the word of God, the voice of God can come to you. Because God's voice is upon his word. The Bible says the voice of the Lord is upon the water. Yet the voice of the Lord is upon many waters. And the waters is the word of God. Can I tell you this right now? You may be wishing that God speaks to you. God speaks to us in his word. So feeding daily on the word is building your spirit man by the word. And in the day of adversity, beloved, you won't believe the kind of emission that will come out of you. But when your spirit man is empty, when the enemy invades your territory in the day of trouble, you will have nothing to come out. This is how empty most of us are. That when we are under spiritual attack, we call the name of our parents. Some of us have no script. Have you been in an attack before in the dream? Where you are trying to remember one script and no one is coming in, none is inside your spirit. You can't draw from where you didn't take, you didn't invest into. You can't withdraw when there are no deposits. Now I want to ask you, what's the deposit level of God's word in your spirit, man? Because the book of Proverbs 24, 3 to 5 told me, he said, a wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increases strength. So God's word remains one of the vital tools to building a strong spirit. Jesus defeated the devil just by it is written. He knows what, he wasn't opening Bible to say it at that point in time. He was coming out from his spirit. Most of us have not done enough deposit in the world that will permit full emission when required. May you not be caught up in adversity when your pastor's number is not reachable because it is what is inside of you that you must emit at that point in time. Beloved, we don't have an option outside of God. And if God is the only way to life, the word of God must be a book to be opened daily. Because as we open the book, our lives are opened up. I charge you today before God that you need to properly feed your spirit man. Because it is the strength of your spirit man that your destiny runs upon. If a man faints in the day of adversity, his strength is small. And feeding on the word of God is one way we build spiritual capacity. Number two way of, rather, number three key in building your life spiritually is be filled in the spirit and remain so. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, he said, be not drunk in while wearing essence, but be filled with the spirit of God. That you can speak to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, in different things. He listed in that place right now. Can I ask you a question? Many got baptized in the Holy Ghost and over a period of time, they seem to have experienced some kind of leakages when nothing is happening in their life. And at this point in time, I told you that the word of God is food. I liken the Holy Ghost to be the blood that flows in the physical. We eat food and our blood transmits all the nutrients of the food into our system. Now the Holy Ghost is the blood of the believer. Everything that the nutrient of the world supplies to you it will take the Holy Ghost to send them to the required area of your destiny. The Holy Ghost is the blood in the believer. 
that flows through every system in him. But when you lack the empowerment of the spirit, you will lack capacity to manifest the new trend that you have in the word of God. The Holy Ghost is the one that helps you rightly divide the word of truth. He chooses which word to bring out of you in the day of adverse attack of the enemy. What blood is to a man is what the Holy Ghost is to you. Just like without blood circulation, there can be no supply of nutrients to other parts of your body, even if the nutrients are available. So for every Christian, there can be no supply of required revelations in your life without the person and the working of his power, the Holy Ghost, in your life. At this point, attending church services below is not enough to make you grow as the Lord intends. It is good you are in every service. I admire that in you. There are personal commitment and investment you must make. Mark it. Personal commitment and investment you must make. In my own understanding, the church is like a classroom where you are shown practical examples on how you are going to do certain things, how to fast, how to pray, the essence of going to church. They teach you all of those things in church, but you get back home and they give you homework. Most believers are not doing their homework, and that's why they have no personal experiences and encounters with the Lord. It is your investment in doing the extra that makes you an extraordinary believer. Some persons give their life to Christ same day, same time, but over a period of time, we notice that one has outgrown the other. And it's the simple thing is one has invested so much personally. If they give you homework in school and you don't do it, you are not growing yourself. You are simply undoing yourself. Unfortunately, there are many believers whose spiritual lives have dwindled because their spirituality ends in the church. They open their Bible only in the church. They sing only in the church. They pray only in the church. In the church, they are highly spiritual brothers but outside they are highly carnal because they believe the church is a place with no spirituality. Spirituality is not needed in the church. The church is a community of believers. Spirituality is needed outside of the church because you are made the light of the world, not the light of the church. So without spirituality, you cannot manifest Christ outside. And this is what leads me to the fourth key today, exercising yourself unto godliness. How do I grow spiritually? Exercising yourself unto godliness. We understand right diet is required for growth and also right exercises is required for growth. There are certain spiritual exercises which are called spiritual investment everyone must make on his life or else he will not grow as the Lord intended him to grow. Ask any genuine believer who has truly experienced spiritual growth their personal investment personal sacrifice. One of it is the sacrifice of prayer and fasting. A prayer and fasting life. Not fasting when the child calls for one, but you separating yourself to seek the Lord and to know more of Him. There are many believers who hate fasting. They are only dodging that aspect of growth. You can't grow spiritually if you are not a man that is given to prayer and fasting. This is what I call prayer and fasting. Is a spiritual system by which God empties our spirit of every form of fleshiness and carnality to fill us with himself. A man who doesn't love prayer and fasting cannot have more of God because fasting empties you of yourself and, feel, and you have the privilege of appearing before God where he fills you with himself. David said, my soul longed for thee in a dry and tasty land where there's no water. And he said, I want, I want to see your glory. I want to see your power. Our prayer and fasting life is one of the ways we power our spirit man for effective growth in the kingdom. Number two, walking in obedience is another exercise you must do if you want to grow spiritually. Can I let you understand that every word of God you hear will have no profit to you if you are not walking in obedience. Every walk of obedience is grooming you for a greater walk with God. Everyone who is disobeying God is not growing. Obedience is one mark of spiritual growth. And obedience is something you exercise yourself onto. When we're in the world, under the element of this world, the Bible says when the spirit of disobedience was working in us. That is um, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Can I say this to you right now? You require exercising yourself to obedience. 
every spiritual truth you hear from the church. Go and go and practicalize it. Put it to work. Until you are doing that, you are not growing. Number three, exercise that you must engage in is the exercise of meditation. This is one aspect many persons are not involved. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You must do well to meditate upon it night and day. Meditation simply means the act of thinking of scriptures. I've had people say, I don't know how to meditate. Before I start meditating, my mind will go to somewhere else. Anybody that can worry can meditate. Meditation is just a reverse order of worry. But now, the person worrying is worrying about certain challenges of life. But whoever is meditating is thinking on the word. So anybody that can worry can meditate. So somebody is hearing me right now. Maybe you read a lot of the word of God. The reason why spiritual truth have not come deep inside of you is because you lack meditation. Meditation is the spiritual process of sending the word into our spirit. The word is ordained to operate from our spirit and from our mind. Reading is for your eyes. Now you must go beyond time. Every time you read, close your eyes. Shut yourself down. Think through the things you have read. Meditate on how does this apply to my life. Because without meditation, there will be no digestion of the food, of the word that you have received. I understand that the fact you ate food doesn't mean the food will supply nutrients. There must be a process called digestion. After digestion is done, they will be called assimilation. It is the process of meditation that breaks the word that we have had into beatable form, usable form for your life. Most of us are good with note writing that we have never opened once in our life. It is not the cleanness of your notes or the beautiful notes you keep that will save you in the day of adversity. It's how much of the word of God in your spirit, man. Can I let you understand today? The exercise of meditation is your responsibility. Your pastor won't do that for you. Wake up. Sit down in his presence. Think on his word. Think on his faithfulness. Think on diverse things that the Lord has spoken to you about. Send them to your spirit, man. So that when you are sleeping, the word is still rolling inside of you. The Lord will bless you really good in Jesus' name. Another area you need to exercise yourself to grow up is walking in love. Love is something, it's not a word. I love you is not a statement. I love you is a verb, it's an action word. If you can't walk in the reality of love, you will not get anything out of it. Can I share a testimony with you? Walking in love is practical. I remember one of the good days in my life after preaching in our family devotion. I preached so much on love. It was such a powerful message. I enjoyed it with my wife and the persons that were with us in the house that morning. And good enough, I went back to, I went out of the house. I was still in my master's program then. God wanted to test the message I preached. If truly I was true about what I said. And the first person I met was an undergraduate student who was assisting in my master's degrees experiment in the farm. And as I was talking to her, I gave her instruction and she gave a reaction, a nasty reaction. A small girl who was less than 17 asked me, are you stupid? Do you have sense? At that point in time, something in me wanted to wall up. And the Holy Spirit told me, shall you preach walking in love today? And instantly I calmed down. I didn't answer the girl. She was insulting and reading abuses at me. After a while, she went away. And something inside of me told me, you must not forgive her. Ensure that she doesn't get any results from this experiment you do, that she will come back and do it. I was face to face to take God's word or to follow my ego. At that point in time, I went back home thinking of all that the girl said to me, hurtful and painful. But the next day, I came to school. I already prepared the result. I gave her a copy. She started crying. It was a time for me to prove my love or show hatred. At that point, the man of God will say, since I did it and she tried me, she won't get a result. But the Lord designed that at that point in time, my obedience and love should be tested. I don't know at the point in time where your love is being questioned right now. Friends, our love for God, showing that we love God part time, is one way we show that we are growing spiritually. We saw Joseph say, I fear God, I can't do this thing. The, chef, uh, the Hebrew boy said, never, won't bow down. They proved the sincerity of their love. The next way you prove and exercise yourself for spiritual growth is practicing forgiveness. One of the reasons why many, many believers' spirits seem to be contaminated, polluted, prayers are hindered, and they are not making much impact is simply because they are living in bitterness of hearts. 
Friends, it doesn't matter who has offended you. It doesn't matter how grieved the offense is. Practicing forgiveness is utmost for your own benefits. Can I let you understand? You will hinder your growth. You will hinder your glory. Because where there is no growth spiritually, there cannot be glory. Practicing forgiveness is one way to let your spirit grow. Can I let you understand? Offenses are about to happen to you in this world. But you must understand that it is your responsibility to forgive. Can I let you understand? Mark 11, 25, 26. Jesus talking in that place said, If any man ought anything against you, and you remember you are carrying a gift to the altar, say drop your gift first. Meaning I'm not interested in your gift, I'm interested in your heart. Because it is the state of your heart that qualifies what is in your hand. There are many who come to the altar of prayer and shout, and God is not hearing them. Why? They have locked somebody in their heart. And they've told themselves, I will never forgive. That's why you are still small. That's why there's no tangible progress in your life. Can I let you understand today? You are not growing if you can't forgive. I often said something for my spiritual father. He said a statement which have stayed with me for life. There is no man too big not to be offended. And there's no offense too big not to be forgiven. This has shaped my life and has constructed the way I see life. You are not too big not to be offended. And there's no offense that is too big not to be forgiven. If you have this spiritual understanding, friends, you will grow. Forgive people in advance so that your own life can make progress with God. Even if it was one of the major requirements given us in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's one area that indicates spiritual growth. There are many who are dying under the weight of malice. They have grown bitter in their spirit. Believers in church. For two years, you say you are not talking to somebody. You have been dead for two years. You are not growing. You are a dead man already. That's why there are all kinds of sicknesses among us. Why? Our spirit man has been polluted with the, with the weight of unforgiveness. One thing you must exercise yourself continuously is forgiving people. Because as you walk through life every day, offenses will come. And to exercise yourself in Christ, forgiveness is a must. The last exercise I want to talk about today for growing up spiritually is giving. Covenant practices. You will never grow into God's financial destiny for you except you are a covenant practitioner. Friends, you may know how to pray. Friends, you may know how to fast. Oh my God, you are a good meditator of the word of God. You are a lover of God. And But if you are giving does not show you love God, you will struggle financially. Can I let you understand today, my friend, that prayer will be a waste of time if you truly, doesn't know, if you truly don't know how to give. Only givers are entitled to God's prosperity plan. As I round up today to teach us two benefits of spiritual growth. What do I stand to gain if I grow spiritually? Two benefits. Number one, you are able to assess all your inheritances. You have a lot of inheritances in Christ Jesus, but only accessible as you grow. What you have right now is how much you have grown. If you grow more, you have more. God will limit what he gives to you because he doesn't want to lose you. He gave Saul a throne. He lost Saul. He doesn't want to lose you. If God gives certain blessings to many of us right now, most of us will be out of range from God. Our inheritances are limited to our spiritual growth. Acts 20, 32. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Friends, I commend you to God. His word, it grows you and gives you an inheritance. You have a lot of inheritances in God. You have blessings in God that are yet untouched. The Bible call it the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. But you can't assess any of these things except you are growing. Would you tell yourself today this truth, that what I have in God today is how much I have grown? If I want more in God, I will grow more. As I conclude today, the last benefit I will talk about today on spiritual growth, it confers you authority. How much God can give you to control in the universe is a function of your spiritual growth. I like Luke chapter 19 and verse 17. talks about the parable of a man who gave his servant Give one five talents, he gave another one three talents, give another one one talent, he gave them, and the Bible says, according to their several ability. Can I say, according to how much they have grown themselves? 
We are all of the church, but we all don't have the same level of authority. And the difference, friends, is not our tribe. The difference is our level of spiritual growth. How much of personal investment and commitment we have made over our life. Not all of us who come out the same day to give our life to Christ have the same level of authority. We have a common salvation, but different authority level in Christ. And the difference is how much we are choosing to grow with the Lord. Growing up spiritually is a continuous process. It will not grow and stop because whatever stopped growing and started dying, growth is a continuous process. We will all continue to grow till we meet with Jesus on that very day where he will tell us, welcome. We were told the man with five talents grew so much and added extra five talents. The one with two talents grew so much and added others. And when the master came, he was so pleased. He gave him more. And he said, to him that has, more shall be given. But he that has little, the little he has shall be taken away from him. We saw one who did not do anything about his growth. He spoke so bad about his master. And that which he has was removed from him. Can I ask you today, the little God has given to you, how much have you grown it? Because God will come at certain seasons of life, as shown us in scripture. He came, a man planted a vineyard. At a certain time, he came to look at the vineyard, if the vineyard has grown well. And he noticed after three years, the vineyard didn't do well. And they told him, give him one more year. Meaning every man at the end of every four years should be able to account for his growth. Spiritually, and physically at every four years the master came to check at the third year and at the fourth year he said give him one more year if you can't account for whatever god committed into your hand ministry business relationship in four years it means you are not growing this is the end of the year i'd like you to take a start of your life right now it is time for you to be conscious of your work with god the reason you have not attained certain level of glory because you have not grown the way you ought to. Make conscious effort to grow. Growth is intentional. Growth is deliberate. There are personal commitments, personal investment every man must make. But i like you to know it will take the grace of God for your investment not to be a waste. That's why I ran up today telling you right now, every decision you are to make on growth. You must make it asking God for grace. Recently, I took a major decision of my life on how I'm going to be working, and I never believed I could stand that spiritual rigor, but I asked for grace. I'm amazed how in one week that I've shaped my spiritual life into another dimension. Friends, it is investment that determines dividend. Growth is what gives rise to the glory of God on your life. If you are not seeing anything about God in your life and you're deserving God, Check your spiritual growth. I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus that you grow in grace and that you grow in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and that your walk with God will take a new dimension from today. Greater glory of the Lord you will see in Jesus' precious name.